Whenever a new operating system drops, we're always faced with the same question, in-place upgrade or clean installation. In this nugget, we're gonna break down the differences between them, talk about the factors that will influence your decision, and we'll actually perform an in-place upgrade in the virtual lab. Let's begin by defining these upgrade methods. First up, an in-place upgrade. This is when we move from an older version of the operating system to a newer version, but staying on the same physical hardware. The benefit of this method is that it's quick and we maintain everything that was already on that older operating system. So configurations, settings, any roles and features we've installed, as well as our data. Next up, we have a clean installation, which we've actually performed a few of them over the last couple of nuggets. This is where we essentially start from scratch. We install the operating system either onto a blank disk or if we have a disk that already has an operating system on it, we just blow it away. The end result is the same. It's a fresh installation with nothing on it. This method is usually used in combination with a migration. Unless, of course, we have no down-level servers and this literally is the beginning of our server's life. Then it's just a clean installation. But most of the time we have down-level servers with workloads on them. And so what we do is stand up a new server, perform a clean installation, and then migrate all of the configuration settings, data, roles, and features from our old server to the new server, otherwise known as a clean installation plus migration. And by the way, that's what the new storage migration service is here to help us with, reduce the pain and facilitate the process of migration, and we'll actually cover that in our skill on storage. So which one do you choose? An in-place upgrade or a clean installation and possibly a migration? One of the primary factors that will heavily influence your decision is if you can even perform an in-place upgrade. What you're looking at here is a graphic right out of Microsoft's documentation that shows our upgrade paths. And I'll give you the link to this doc, by the way. But this shows us and tells us that you can perform an in-place upgrade to the current version from the previous two versions. So for server 2019, we can perform an in-place upgrade from server 2012 R2. From server 2016, we can perform an in-place upgrade from server 2012 or server 2012 R2. And this is a great little legend down here because it shows us our mainstream support period here in the solid blue lines, the extended support period here in the dotted blue lines, and then our supported upgrade path with the black lines. So the black line here is telling us for server 2019 that we can only do an in-place upgrade from server 2012 R2. So let's say that you had a down-level machine that was regular old server 2012, and you wanted to move it to 2019. Well, we know that a direct in-place upgrade is not possible. So what you could do is perform an in-place upgrade of server 2012 R2 and then an in-place upgrade of server 2019. Or, because that's a lot of work, performing two upgrades, you could just stand up a brand new server 2019 machine and then perform a migration over to it. A good rule to live by when it comes to upgrades is do an in-place upgrade when you can. Just don't forget to take that back up first and do a clean installation and migration for everything else. Now in our virtual lab environment for this nugget, we have a down level server 2016 machine with a very light workload on it. The DHCP and file services role is installed. So let's head on over there and take this machine to 2019 by performing an in-place upgrade. So I logged into serve 16 nug and server manager automatically fired up. Just to show you here, if we head on in, we can prove here that we have the DHCP and file and storage services role installed. Again, very light workload. And also notice our operating system version here is 2016 data center edition. So I'm gonna minimize server manager. In order to upgrade this to server 2019, we're gonna need access to the installation media, which I have mounted here to the DVD drive. And here, all we need to do is run setup. It'll take just a minute or two here for setup to prepare and get us into the installation wizard. Once we're in here, we're going to go ahead and choose not right now, although you would normally want to download updates, drivers, and optional features prior to doing so. We'll hit next. And look at that, a familiar looking screen. This is where we choose what we want to upgrade to. And notice that we're not locked into upgrading directly from server 2016 desktop experience to server 2019 desktop experience. We could easily upgrade this to server core or even cross editions back to standard. But we are going to go one to one here and just upgrade to server 2019 data center with the desktop experience. Once again, we need to accept the license terms. And finally here, this is where we choose, are we gonna do a in-place upgrade where we wanna keep everything that's already on this machine or do we wanna do a clean installation right over the top of this? We're gonna choose the first one here, that way those roles that are installed will carry over to server 2019. And that's it, we get a nice little summary here. 
and we're ready to rock. I'm gonna hit the install button and let it go. Whew, well that felt like a million years. In reality, it only took a little over an hour, but that is one thing to keep in mind. Obviously, in-place upgrades are gonna take a little bit longer, even more so if you have a large workload running on that machine. But as we can see, we get the Windows Admin Center message and both of our roles made it over. And we can verify here if we hit local server and server manager that we are now on Windows Server 2019 Data Center Edition. So the moral of the nugget is in-place upgrade if you can, clean installation and migration for everything else. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.